everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Doing Yarn podcast, Hell in a Cell edition. So, let's get started. So, Gad, how did you think of the pay-per-view? What did I think about the pay-per-view? Um, I'm going to be honest. I, caught, I want to say the last three matches, or four, what was it? Um, I caught the main event, obviously. Um, Seth versus Kevin Owens and the cruiserweight T.J. Perkins and Brian Kendrick. Um, let's see. Yeah, those are the ones I caught. From what I saw, I really enjoyed it. Um, overall, there was there was really not, not that much hype, no build to any of the matches on the card. There was like there, there was no storyline why. Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins ended up in the Hell in a Cell. So it was just one of those things, just put him in a cell. But besides that, it was a good match. You know what? Um, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, they put on a great show. Do you agree or disagree? What do you think? Oh, I really agree. I really liked the matches. I really enjoyed all the matches. Not um, in the cell and not in the cell. I Like, which one? Did you caught more of the card than I did, right? Um, yeah, I think I caught, uh, two matches, more couple ma- yeah, I got a couple matches more than you did on watching it. Yeah. I really, there was actually two major f- f- matches I wanted to watch. I wanted to watch The Club, since I'm a fan of The Club, versus Enzo and Cass, which I missed, and, um, the main event, Charlotte and Sasha. I'm glad they got to be the actual main event of the card. Well, I think if anyone from the WWE right now on the Raw on the Raw program deserves it, it's those two. Charlotte's just getting better and better, dude. Uh, in ring performance, um, and on the mic, she's getting good. I think she's right now. She's the best woman out there when it comes to women's wrestling, I'm, and I'm not just saying that, I'm talking about from all the matches we've seen, I'm from like the indie shows we've been to, to SmackDown, to Raw, Charlotte is number one, um, but we'll talk about that a little, a little bit more later, but going back to it, you caught, you club versus the Enzo and Cass, right? Yes, I did. Finally, the club actually won well, the match. They finally won something. <laughs> yeah, uh, I am not liking the way they're being used right now on WWE TV. Oh, real quick, people. Um, if you hear background noise, it's because we're actually doing this in the car while we're driving home from our Hell in a Cell get-together. <laughs> So this is what, if, so if you hear back, background noise, that's what's happening. We're driving, other cars are making noises. Well, yeah, I'm glad they finally got the big one. I'm going to have to watch that when I get home later tonight. Yeah, well, they actually beat um, Enzo Amore with the Magic Killer. Oh, really? That's awesome. Good stuff, good stuff. Maybe that's... A sign of good things to come, or I, you know, I don't know what's going on on Raw. I kind of pretend to understand what's going on. So, and that's the second pay per view I, I want to say. The New Day wins. Oh, okay, I'm just jumping from the club to the New Day. Okay, so the, the club beat Enzo and Cass. Where does that leave them in the picture? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And Sheamus and Cesaro, which are really becoming a good tag team, they're finally hit, hitting their stride. It looks like they're going to let the New Day keep those belts till they become the longest tag team champions over Demolition. And then they're probably going to lose it. Because they're just... This is the second pay-per-view that the New Day loses by disqualification. Remember when Big E came out and disqual- got disqualified over the club? Oh, yeah. That was a couple of pay-per-views ago. 
And this one, obviously, Kofi got involved. If anything, they should have had that match inside the Hell in a Cell. But anyway, what are you going to do? Uh, fast forward now, Sheamus and Cesaro. What did you think about that match? Sheamus, Cesaro versus The New Day. Well, I think it was a good match. I find the tag team of Cesaro and Sheamus a bit funny. How they hate each other, but they're still a tag team. So it's kind of funny how they tag and kind of like... It's, they tag with anger yeah. towards each other, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um... Well, I think it was a good match how I, for a minute, I really thought that they had, like, a good, really good chance of winning um, Cesaro and Sheamus. I was actually a bit scared for the New Day when, <laughs> yeah, and until Kobe got hit with the trombone no. with, oh, was it? Um. No, Biggie got hit oh, with the trombone. Biggie got hit with the trombone with Francesca, too. Wow. Well, yeah, I like that match. It was a good match, good tag team match. And um, since um, Kofi actually disqualified them, um, they still kept the titles, but also Sheamus and Cesaro beat them. Yeah. So. So they got the they beat them on Monday. Also, they got the clean pin on Monday. Sheamus and Cesaro did over the new day, and now they beat them via. DQ, so I'm seeing there's going to be another match tomorrow on Raw. There has to be a rematch on Raw. Um, because, yeah, they're just, I, I keep saying it, I don't know what Raw's doing. I don't know what Raw's doing because their, 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 their creative team, it's just all over the place. So now it's if they come back tomorrow, do they, is it going to be another title shot? Or they're getting ready for a uh, coming up pay-per-view or whatnot. I don't, again, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. And are they going to have the club against Enzo and Cass one more time? I, I Again, I don't know. Yeah, just like you said, Raw's a bit confusing. There's no really, there's not, there's no storyline. To the matches on what they lead up to, so we don't know if there's going to be rematches or no, nothing. It's pretty confusing. Raw is kind of all over the place. Yeah. Okay, um, let's shoot forward to the cruiserweights. I'm not, I'm not liking what to do with the cruiserweights right now. It's like, why do they make the ropes purple? Are they their own brand? Is it WWE Cruiserweight? Like, why are they mixing and matching? Like, I don't... They're yet to catch my attention. Like, it was a good match. TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick. It was that, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is the first time I actually sat down to watch a Cruiserweight match. But, they should not change the ring color to purple for them. They should leave it the same, just like with everyone else, and have them mix and match. Add a couple more guys from the from Raw, the main roster, to the cruiserweight division, like Neville, right? Yeah. That's well, that's my opinion. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I agree. Neville, he's still on the main roster. What brand is he on? He's on Raw. Oh, he's on Raw. Yeah, but they're not doing anything with them. Man. Why is he not, um, he's not on the cruiserweight, and like the cruiserweights, have him wrestle against Sami Zayn and on a regular match, you know, just like WCW used to, like cruiserweights will fight the cruiserweights, but also fight the other guys, it's just, they're just a title, it's not like, um, Roman Reigns versus Rusev for the US title, they're the only ones that are in that division, so they're the only ones going to fight, no, it's not that. It looks that way right now because no one else is even near involved in that in that title picture, but that's something else. But the cruiserweights, I think they gotta stop like separating them with their own rain color and all that. You just throw them in the mix. And when there is a cruiserweight title match, it's a cruiserweight title match. No worries. I believe it's uh, 200 pounds. They gotta be on 200 pounds. 
so they should go that route. But it was a good match. What did you think about TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick? Yeah, just like you said, it, it was a good match. The Cruiserweights are good. And just like how you said, how they changed the whole ring just for them, how they should be in, like, the actual WWE. They, yeah, they should be acknowledged as WWE wrestlers well, on the Raw brand. Yes, on the Raw brand. Yeah, that's what it should be. Okay, next match. Uh, we just talked about New Day and Cesaro, which I think Cesaro, Sheamus, they're, they're over. I think they're going to be our next tag team champions. Or something's got to happen. I I actually see them turn the WWE little by little and turn New Day heels. I just see it that way. I don't know why. Just the disqualifications and something. Something's going to happen. They're going to end up going heel. Turning heel. But, okay, let's go. We already spoke about them. Um, what was the next match? Oh, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins. Hell in a Cell match. What did you think about that? What? Well, that was a re- really good match. How, um... It, it was just a good match, everything. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, you know what, I'll tell you what. Uh, Kevin Owens, for a, a guy, I know that probably, pro, people probably said this a million times. For a guy his size, he can work. And he is no slouch in that ring. Seth Rollins, same thing. Seth Rollins, they, they put a good show. And uh, right now, they're the only thing going on on Raw. No. Yeah, how, how Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens there, and even Chris Jericho, they're the main ones on Raw right now, and they, they're they awesome performers. They had a very good match. Yeah, they did. Um, that, that power bomb Kevin Owens took over to the outside on top of the tables, Jesus. Uh, Kevin Owens takes those big bumps, man. He, he, it just looked bad. The way he folded up, <laughs> it looked bad. Yeah, it really did. How he went right through, just slammed right through those two tables stacked up. It, just like you said, it was, looked really bad. And it was an, it was an awesome match besides... Well, yeah, actually, and just like how he said, Kevin Owens takes those huge bumps uh, in the ring, outside the ring, on tables, everywhere. Just like at WrestleMania, when he went right through the ladder like nothing, he stood there the rest of the night. Where? Well, this is away from that, what we're just talking about, away from the subject we're just talking about. Uh, the Hell in Cell in general, I know I'm probably in the minority here, but I'm glad no one climbed to the top of the cage. There's no need for anyone to go on top of, go for that big bump. There's no, there's no need for it right now. If she, they're, they're working good in the ring. You don't need to overcompensate by getting on top of the cage and jumping off. I'm glad that didn't happen. Or from what I've seen, I don't, I didn't get to see the Rusev versus Roman Reigns match. I'm not sure. If, did anyone get climb up the cage on that? No, no. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad no one did. Yeah, there's no need for people to do that right now. And they're all good workers, and they're putting on a great show. So there's no need to get the cheap, the the cheap pops by climbing to the top of the cage. But yeah, overall, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins match, I give it a name. I saw no flaw in that. Them whatsoever in that match. But I did see one thing when Jericho came out, which Jericho, for the last few pay per views, last couple of months, last few months, is something good on TV. Jericho's just doing his thing right now. He's, he's good. So when you got Jericho on the TV, it's going good. Um, the very, I see the quick turn with. Jericho and Owens, while 
after the match, Jericho stayed in the ring or went back to the ring, and he assaulted um, Seth Rollins a little bit more. That final look back that Kevin Owens gave while Jericho was still in the ring with his hand up in the air, I see that becoming something bigger. What do you think on that? Yeah, just like how you said, I I do see it becoming something bigger, just like how you said, how he came in and he had his hand raised. Yeah, so, I, hopefully, please, I, I'm pretty sure, I think Jericho's time's coming to an end with WWE this time around, so, so I think that, that that's uh, their final feud right there for Jericho, probably, probably will be Owens, but I could be wrong, I'm pretty sure I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be wrong, <laughs> next was the main event, the match I wanted to see, I'm a big fan of Charlotte Flair now, since I'm such a Ric Flair mark, I guess, just by, just by, well, just by relation, I've become a Charlotte mark now, too. Charlotte is awesome. Like I said earlier, she's probably the top woman performer out there right now in all of wrestling. And, again, this match, Charlotte and Sasha stole the show one more time. Every time those two get in the ring together, they're still in the show. It's no longer a surprise. It's what's come to be expected by them. Yeah, you expect, you expect it of them. When they're in the match, they're going to steal the show. They did it at WrestleMania. They did it, did it in every pay-per-view since. Those two could work together, and they'll work great. Um, what do you think about that last main, the main event? Well, the main event was my favorite match. It... They went for it and everything, but at the beginning, I really thought Sasha was hurt, and they were going to give the belt to Charlotte. <laughs> I was really scared there, um, but she came back, and it, Char Charlotte um, came up with the victory, but it was an awesome match. It really was. Uh, they're awesome workers. I give this match an A+. Plus. Yeah, it's one of those matches you really can't be mad at anyone. It's just say hey, those two women go out there and they put it on the line and they they succeed. They they at what they're doing, they're still in the show, and there's there reason there was a reason they were in the main event, and no one really got upset about it their last match on the card because they've proven it time and time after time. They're they're just awesome, and especially Charlotte. Now for me, Charlotte's it. I'm a big Becky Lynch fan. I'm a big Alexa Bliss because I see in the future Alexa Bliss is going to be big. She's going to be a top heel. But at the end of the day, they can't touch Charlotte. No. She, Charlotte's the top one right now. She's the, she's, she's gen genetically superior. <laughs> and it's funny because... Looking back at Ric Flair's old days, she does not have the same wrestling style as Rick at all. And I just think it's funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was a great match. Charlotte, again, congratulations to her. Becoming a three-time women's champion already. She, it's three-time, right? Yes, it's three-time. This was her third time. And that's not, is that including the Divas champion? No, it's not, just the women's. So overall, she's a four-time WWE champion. Yes, counting the Divas, Divas and the and women's. women's. Okay. Hey, she's 12 away from her fathers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was pretty great. Pretty good show. Pretty good show. From what i seen, like I said... Uh, did I already grade it or no? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay. I give it a strong B. A B because 
Um, the other storylines, there was really huge none. But it was a good pay-per-view. I'm not going to hate on it. It was a good pay-per-view. I really don't know what to give it. How the matches were really good. How they're awesome workers, performers. But just like how you said, there was little to no storylines um, leading up to the match. So I don't know what to give it. Maybe I'll I'll give it a good B plus. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's a fair grade. Nothing to be mad at on that. Um, yeah, it was, again, like I said, it was an awesome, awesome show. Awesome main event. Nothing to be ashamed of. WWE had two great workers. And at this point, I don't even want to call them women wrestlers anymore. I don't want to categorize them as their women. I just want to, they're just wrestlers from here on out. Because they're, they're still in the show. They're going out there and doing it. Yeah, they're, they're awesome performers. Awesome wrestlers. Oh. Well, they, they still show every pay-per-view. Every Monday Night Raw. They do. And not only the women on Raw, but on SmackDown, too. Yeah. They all steal the show. They're all, they're all good, man. They're all doing their thing. And I think that's pretty much it for our, our show for tonight, right? Yeah, I think that's it. We yeah. covered the matches that we wanted to say. Yeah, and our drive and our drive's almost ending. <laughs> um, but real quick before we call it a night, just a quick thank you to yesterday running to Rob Van Dam. At Stanley's Los Angeles Comic Con. What a great guy. Nice guy, right? Oh, yeah. He was really nice. Yeah, he even he retweeted your picture. <laughs> and PCW, Pacific Coast Wrestling, put it on their, on their site. So if you're, anyone sees the PCW Facebook page, there's a picture of Rob Van Dam with the little girl dressed like Harley Quinn. That's her. That's good old Hannah. <laughs> and also to Vic, to Lisa Marie Varon. Ver, yeah, Varon. Um, thank you. Almost had her on the podcast. But real quick, you may know her as WWE's for, former women's Women. champion, champion, Victoria, or TNA knockout champion, former TNA knockout champion, Tara. Tara, yeah, Tara, right? Tara. Tara, Tara, whatever they say it. Uh, almost came really close to getting her on the podcast yesterday, but timing was just not right. <laughs> Fell through. One day we'll, we will get her on it, but until then, she, she couldn't be she couldn't be no ni- any nicer to us. She was really nice. And I just want to say thank you to those two. And I think that's pretty much our show for tonight. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you can always reach us on Twitter at doing the Orton. It's doing underscore the underscore Orton. Or also on our Instagram page, also called doing the Orton. Um, and that's pretty much it. So you guys have a great day, great night. Depends what time you're listening to this. Have a great sh- have a great day everyone. Bye. Bye everyone.